Hi, I'm Gozong, 50 years old. In this lesson on limits calculation, we'll continue looking at patterns of limit questions where we are given the function of the limit, the result of the limit, but we have to determine a few constants or coefficients, all right? So let's take a look at what we have in this case. So we're given that limit x approaches to positive infinity square root x squared minus x plus 1 minus ax minus b is equal to 0. And we need to find the values of a and of b. So one thing we can immediately determine from this example, the indeterminable form is infinity minus infinity. And this infinity minus infinity, you realize that a has to be some kind of positive, positive value in order to have the infinity minus infinity. Otherwise, it becomes infinity plus infinity, which does not give the value of zero, all right? So, in this example, we will be separating them into three different methods. Let's take a look at method one. So, method one, we will have numerator rationalization. So, numerator rationalization. Essentially, we take a look at this function. We have some kind of a, a minus b form. And in this a minus b form, you can just multiply and divide by a plus b. So, what we see is limit. x approaches to positive infinity. And we will have x squared minus x plus 1 minus ax plus b squared and this is divided by square root x squared minus x plus 1 plus ax plus b okay so now that we have this form here which is an infinity over infinity or in the numerator it is also in infinity minus infinity but let's take a look at what if we separate them into in terms of x squared, x, and the constant, all right? So this is equal to limit. x approaches to positive infinity. And we're going to have 1 minus a squared, x squared, minus 1 plus 2ab, x plus 1 minus b squared and this has to be divided by the denominator doesn't change right now we take a look at this form again let's think about this this has to be equal to 0 being equal to 0 if you have an x squared in the numerator well your denominator the highest possible power is 1 since you have a 1 and you have a square within a square root, which is still highest power of 1. So, if you have an x square in the numerator, its coefficient has to be 0 in order for it to be 0. Otherwise, it will just be infinity. All right? So, 1 minus a square is equal to 0. Next, we look at the term with x. Now, this x... Since you have x in the numerator and highest power of x in the denominator, x, when you try to solve for it, when the coefficient of x is actually something that's not non-zero, you will realize that it, could, it is probably, very possibly, some multiple of your coefficient. But in this case, the question that we're given the result is zero, which means that this coefficient also has to be equal to zero. So one plus two a b is equal to zero. Right, so we have this set of simultaneous equations. Since one minus b squared, you cannot determine what b is. Since this is just a constant, well, the highest power in the denominator 
is x to the power of 1. But if it is just a constant divided by infinity, it's always 0. So this constant, you cannot determine what it will exactly be. But how you can determine it is by looking at these simultaneous equations that we have. So, since we know 1 minus a squared is equal to 0, which means a is either negative 1 or positive 1, but looking at the question, negative 1 does not really seem to be a fitting response since it will be infinity plus infinity. So, a has to be equal to 1. And since a is equal to 1, 1 plus 2b is equal to 0, that gives b is equal to negative half. Alright, so this will be the result that we get. Alright, so this is the first method by using numerator rationalization. Let's take a look at the second method. So in method 2, what we will have to use is conversion from infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation. So since you have some kind of infinity related here, right? So we can change that infinity calculation into infinitesimal calculation. But that is not really the only thing that we will use. Can you think about something else that we will have to use along with this infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation? Well, there are two different things that you can go along with this. And the first one that we're going to use is the L'Hopital's rule. All right, so infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation along with the L'Hopital's rule, what you're going to see is, first of all, you need to know what kind of infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation. So what you can do is let and let whatever you want to be here, well, let's just say u. If u, we let u be 1 over x, which means u approaches to 0 plus. You have to be aware this is 0 plus. Since if you just put 0, if you only put 0, which means it can approach from both ways, but you have to be aware x here approaches to positive infinity, which means your u has to be positive. So from the positive side, you have 0 plus. Right. So now we know what kind of change in calculation or substitution we are taking a look at. What you can have is limit u approaches to 0 plus. So of course you can add an additional step in front to divide this entire thing by x, multiply it by x. Or you could just... Take a look at it. So at first, all of these x square inside would be 1 over u square. So you can take that out. So you have an over u. And if you have 1 over u square here, that would be 1. And this is minus 1 over u, which is minus u. And then you have plus u squared for the second term. Now here, what you're going to see is minus a, so x becomes 1 over u, the u just gets taken to the denominator, so you just have a minus a. While for b, you're going to have b u, alright? So this is what you will see after the change. Alright, so what can you determine from here? Your denominator is a 0. Your numerator is 1 minus a. Now, your numerator is 1 minus a. So if 1 minus a is non-zero, what you will get is an infinity. So 1 minus a has to be equal to 0. All right? And that is where we can use the L'Hopital's rule with a 0 over 0. All right? So let's continue taking a look at this. Now, by using the L'Hopital's rule, limits u approaches to 0 plus. What are we going to see here? So, you have a fraction, and there will be 
over 2 square root 1 minus u plus u squared and you're going to have 2u minus 1 a becomes 0 and you have minus b and then this is divided by 1 so take a look at this again and substitute u is equal to 0 inside once again and what we get you have negative 1 divided by 2, which is a negative half minus b. So negative half minus b is equal to 0. Right, so there we go. We've already found a and we've found b. Since a from this first part, you will know that 1 minus a is equal to 0. So 1 minus a is equal to 0, which means a is equal to 1. And from this second part, negative 1 minus b, negative half minus b, I mean, is equal to 0, which means b is equal to negative half. All right, so this is the second method. From infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation, along with the L'Hopital's rule. Now, just now, I talked about another way to you co to combine with the infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation. Now what do you think is that method? And that will be our method 3. So we will be seeing infinity calculation to infinity infinitesimal calculation along with something else. Now, have you figured out what the other thing is? Well, there are two ways to call this. Normally, you will hear the binomial series. But other times, you might know it as somewhat like a Maclaurin series, alright? So, what will be so special about this method? So, once again, we will be making use of the first part here. So we do have this u is equal to 1 over x and u approaches to 0 plus, then limit. u approaches to 0 plus and you're going to see 1 minus u plus u square. And this time I'm going to write it as to the power of half. Then here minus a minus b u. And this is divided by u. So Binomial series, how are you going to separate this term over here? So in order to separate this term, what you have is 1 minus something, right? So you just take it as 1 minus something and you use binomial series on that. Now, how are we going to use this? So limit, u approaches to 0 plus. The first term, still 1. So. 1. The next we're going to have minus. And this will be minus. So it is half divided by 1. So half. And this half is multiplied by u minus u squared. Alright? So this is the second term. Well, of course, you can continue on with like third term and all. Well, in the third term, you're just going to have add on half multiplied by negative half divided by 1 times 2 multiplied by u minus u squared squared, and so on. But for us, those terms won't exactly be necessary since from u squared onwards, from u squared onwards, you only divide it by u. So those terms with higher powers of u all you have is 0, since once you simplify a u, the rest, you substitute 0 into it. So of course, you can also choose to represent that with a small o notation, or just ignore it altogether. It's up to you. So that means the rest of these terms are insignificant. Well, you can just use a little o u cubed or something like that. Right, so for all the other terms, we won't bother about them. 
And next, we'll just have minus A minus B U. Alright? So, of course, you need to be aware of it over U. Now, we do have the constant terms and terms with U. So limit, U approaches to 0 plus, we'll have 1 minus A and uh, minus half plus B U. And the rest of the, whatever we have, we can just ignore since, well, when you take them out, they'll have some terms with U and it just becomes 0. All right? So these will be the two things we are looking at. And we know this has to be equal to 0. We take a look at the constant terms. 1 minus a. 1 minus a, a constant, if it's divided by 0, it becomes infinity. Unless whatever we have up here is definitely an infinity, is definitely a 0. So if the whatever's above is definitely a 0, it is definitely a 0, right? Which means 1 minus a is equal to 0. Next term, minus half plus b u divided by u. The u simplifies, and you have negative half plus b, which negative half plus b is equal to 0. But that will mean that half plus b is equal to 0. And with this, you know that a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative half. Right? So this is using the third method to find a and b in this example. Right, so there will be three methods for this question here. Let's take a look at what we have used. In method one, we use numerator rationalization and then analyze the coefficients and of course corresponding to the original question to get a is equal to one, b is equal to negative half. In the second method, we use infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation and adding in a L'Hopital's rule which after one use of L'Hopital's rule, it becomes a determinable form. So we can just substitute in the u to find this expression here. And then afterwards, you just solve for a and b. Well, in the final method, we use also the infinity calculation to infinitesimal calculation, but instead we use the binomial series, which we changed this square root into a power of half, the binomial series to get whatever we have over here. So afterwards, you can just once again analyze these coefficients and constants to get a and b as a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative half. So I hope for this lesson, you're clear of both all of these methods so far. I'll be ending this lesson here, and thank you for your watching.